Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. I feel like I should be <laughs> saying that to myself because I haven't been on in quite some time. But thank God I'm back. It's good to be back. So let's let's jump into it. Now, this man, he goes by the name Pastor Joseph Roberts. He is the pastor of Westside Tabernacle Junction City, Kansas Church. Uh huh. He has taken it upon himself to expose the apostle. Right. This was his first exposing of the apostle. Now let's kick right into it. This was actually was his first exposing of the apostle. Listen. Deal to finally expose Gino Jennings. Uh, false teaching on divorce and remarriage. Please check out the link at the bottom of the comment section to view the full sermon. And in Deuteronomy 24, one of his big thing is if you're married already, you've been married before, you need to divorce your spouse and go back to the previous one. Even if they're married, you need to wait and just leave your family, leave your kids and hope that they'll get back with you. No, this was his first exposing, so he said, of the apostle. What did he expose about the apostle? Um, I don't know because I, he, he didn't see, say anything. No, listen to the second exposing, and this is what he named um, these videos. Exposing Gina Jennings and exposing Gina Jennings part one, part two, part three like that so this is is the second exposing of the apostle pastor gina jennings listen Good morning folks this is exposing gino jennings part two uh i know a lot of people have been disgruntled that have come to his church uh we need to go ahead and expose this guy so what i want you to do i don't want no gossip i don't want no fake stuff uh, i want your testimony of how you were treated at the truth of god church or their assembly mother churches and i want to email to me i will place the email in the link i don't want gossip you have to have the establish of two or three witnesses now okay at this point is this man is just catching at straws um he he keeps on saying he's exposing gina jennings he's exposing gina jennings but at the same time he's not saying anything you know, he's not saying anything. And he's saying that um, the apostle doesn't, act, well, he's acting like he, um, he doesn't want to hear anything from no one but God. The apostle stated in may, on many occasions, people can come to him with their um, thoughts and whatever and what have you. But once it is going to um, be contrary to so God's law, God's doctrine, why bother, you know, why bother coming to him with these things? Because he only listens to God. He only follows God's doctrine. That, and that doctrine is actually in the scripture. He only follows the scripture and what is in the scripture. So if you're not going to come to him, so if you're going to come to him with something that is contradicting to the scripture, you know, and say, okay, I get revelation, even though it's not in the scripture and the scripture um, say this way, but I got revelation from God. So you should do it this way. Come on. No, it was left here, the scriptures for us to learn from it and do every single thing the way that it has been written. He even went further to say he wants um, testimonies of you know anyone that that um attend any of the temples really um well he he can watch my videos um i've interviewed quite a few members um brothers and sisters that, and it's not like i exalt or delete out some of what they're saying because it is not um putting the church in a good light no i am not covering anything or covering no church if it's doing something that is not supposed to do everyone is going to know trust me if first church is doing something that it's not supposed to do 
everyone is going to know because the teaching that we, we have gotten from the apostle, from our ministers, is that if it is not in the scriptures, it's not doctrine, it's not law. Not to say that the church doesn't have rules, laws and regulations that is not doctrine, but is not going to force you to do anything that you don't want to do, you know? Now let's go to the next exposing video. The next so-called exposing video from this man here. This is exposing Gino Jennings part three. I just had an interesting conversation on with a YouTube guy and he had asked me a question. He said, you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a false prophet because you're coming against Gino Jennings. So I asked that smart cat a question. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, if someone's been divorced and remarried and then they come to the truth and get baptized in Jesus name and get all their sins washed away, would God still hold that sin against them? He said, yes, God's against divorce and remarriage. God's against it. 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 No, God's against it. God's against it. God's against it. And I asked him, what about John 1, 7? It says, if we are in the light, he's in the light. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. Wow. Now it seems like we're getting somewhere. Um, we're seeing the problems that he is having with um, the doctrine. And I'm not even going to say Gina Jennings doctrine because it is not Gina Jennings doctrine. It is God's doctrine. This is the way that he wants. This is what... This is the way you want the church to be. Now, before I go to the apostle, let me just say this. Um, if you are living a sinful life, and when I say sinful, I mean whatever. It may be smoking, drinking, um, if you're an injurer, if you're a fornicator, if you're an uh, adulterer, if you're living an adulterous life, um, whatever it may be, if you are living a sinful life and you have truly repent and baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. No, let me ask you a question. Shouldn't that person refrain or stop from doing the sinful deeds that they used to do or that they are doing? Shouldn't they stop? It doesn't matter what it may be. Shouldn't they stop sinning? Listen, it is not easy to stop and drop everything and change. Well, for some people, they can do it. But for, for some, it is not easy to drop everything and, you know, stop smoking, stop drinking, stop. It is a process. Stop fornicating, stop um, adultery, it is a process, but we must know that what we are doing is wrong, you know, and the word preached by the ministers and even your local minister and the apostle supposed to be beating on us. Um, the word supposed to be beating on us, pounding us, letting us know that whatever we're doing is wrong. You know, that's, I, I can, I can share this with you. Many times I go through things and when I'm in church, you know, sometimes I want the answer for certain things that I go through or, you know, whatever. And I'm in church and I hear the answer over the pulpit. You know, I hear the answer to my questions, to issues, whatever it may be over the pulpit. So that just tells me that God is hearing me. He is hearing me and I need to hear him and apply the, the, the things I need to apply to my life to be a better person in his sight. Because at the end of the day, that is what really matter to be a better person in the sight of God. And to do that, we have to abide by his law, his rules, and his regulation. For coming into first church, into holiness, I did things that I wasn't proud of and things that I am... I did things that I'm not supposed to be doing that was would be sinful in God's eyes. And I have to change. 
I have to cut those things out and stop doing those things. No matter how simple it may be, you know, though it doesn't matter how simple and easy it may look or sound, I have to stop doing those things. So what he's saying there is rubbish. No, listen to this. Do I have the right, this person says, to divorce my wife since the last three kids she had out the marriage? I walked away with all four kids, Jeff even Jeff now Jeff three were not mine, but I said I don't care. I will take <coughs> care of them. So I am under the law to stay married unto death, do us part, or can I get a divorce and get remarried, this person asked, since she had three kids outside the marriage. I'm so sorry that your wife committed adultery yep. and had kids outside a marriage. All right, let's go to the book of Mark, if I'm correct. Mark. Right. Mark chapter 10. All right. And we'll start reading at verse 2. I need you to move quick. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? Ha! <laughs> Amen. <laughs> tempting him. Now I'm saying, well, you preach Jesus Christ as God. God said he cannot be tempted with evil. God wasn't being tempted. That's right. right it was tempting the Son of God. That's, That's right. right. Can't tempt the spirit. Right. Oh, no. It was tempting the flesh. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? All right. And they said, Moses suffered you to a bill of divorcement. Moses let you do it. And to put her away. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart. All right. Now, <coughs> they said, Who let you do it? Right. Moses suffered. They credit Moses. Right. Moses suffered. It means Moses allowed it. That's right. He didn't say God allowed it. Moses, Moses suffered. Moses. Moses allowed it. Moses. That's right. Moses. Not God. Moses allowed it. Because God law of marriage was established way in the Garden of Eden. But from the beginning. Let, what did he say? Read all of it. Now Mark chapter 10, we're at verse 5 and 6. All right. And Jesus answered and said unto them. Mo First they said Moses. And they said Moses suffered you. You know that's the way you view us are. When you write me, you always make reference to Moses. You that's love that's Moses. Right. Love him. Right. Love him. Mo don't, don't even keep the law, but they love Moses. That's right. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Whenever they want that extra piece of flesh, they run to Moses. That's right. Amen. They put Jesus on the back burner. Where's Amen. Moses? <laughs> Anybody seen Moses? Right. Amen, man. Glory to God. Love him. Come on, son. And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorce. Moses allowed you to write the bill of divorce. And to put her away. And get rid of her. And Jesus answered and now said, Now the boss is talking. For the hardness of your heart. Now. They referred to Moses, and Jesus gave the reason why yeah. Moses did it. For the hardness of your heart. You see that? Right. At no time did Jesus sanction it. No. At no time did Jesus endorse it. That's right. Jesus let you know you wanted flesh. Mm -hmm. That's right. Moses let you have flesh. That's it. Right. Because your heart was all messed up. For the hardness of your heart. Right then, that lets you know who divorce is for. That's it's for people that got a hard heart. That's all right. right. Divorce is for them that have a hard heart. The hardness. The Old Testament call it a stony heart. That's right. Hey! That's right. Glory to God. For the hardness of your heart. For the hardness of your heart. He wrote you this precept. He wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of Wait the creation. Look, look at it. Look at it. Amen. Here comes Jesus going way past right. Moses. That's right. Before Moses was born. That's right. Jesus said. But from the beginning of the creation. Wait a minute. From the beginning, from the beginning of the creation, of creation, God made the male and female. God made the male and female. For this cause, for this reason, shall a man leave his father and mother, <laughs> and do what? And cleave to his wife. Wonderful. Cleave to and female. God made the male and female. For this cause, for this reason, shall a man leave his father and mother, <laughs> and do what? And cleave to his wife. Wonderful. Cleave to his wife. Cleave to his wife. Wife. Wives. Wife. Wife. That's what. One rib. W I F E. Look, one of the qualifications of a bishop, the husband of one wife. Right. If he's married, he only can have one. That's right. You fellas out there, you know you ain't no bishop. <laughs> you done right. divorced and got two, three, four, and five. Amen. And the one that you now have is not yours. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Amen. All right. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Yes. And they twain shall be one flesh. They twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. All right. What therefore God hath joined together. What happened? Let not man put a son. As the Bible said, let not man put a son. And then every man that says you can divorce, he's pushing a message to put them asunder. That's right. Now let's listen to Exposing Gina Jennings Part 4.
Morning, y'all. This is Exposing Geno Genies Part 4. A lot of y'all are mad. Why are y'all so mad? Y'all can't handle the truth? Geno talks about, am I right? Am I right? Hey, when someone comes against you and they got Bible to back it up, don't be mad. Just get on the train and get glad. It's something about having Bible to back up. But in all of his talking, he hasn't bring Bible all now. He's doing these short clips and he can fit in some, some Bible in it as well. But apparently, I guess that is not important to him. Let me give y'all some understanding this bright Sunday morning. Now, there was a uh, person that went to a church that believed like that. And they're husband molested her kids because of that doctrine and that teaching she thought she needed to stay with him because she could not get married again come on god gave you a brain it's right here let's go your brain not because you are a part of first church that automatically means that the devil is not there or the devil is not in the church or the devil is not with you whether it be brothers and sisters not because we are a part of first church that mean that we we don't get um tempted by the devil we don't have struggles we don't have trials we don't have tribulation far from it i i mean maybe we have more more struggles, more trials, more tribulation. Because why would the devil be be um troubling um people that he already have? You know, he already have them. So he doesn't have to pay much attention to them because he already have them. But people like people that is truly serving God, truly trying or striving to obey him in everything that they do say places they go and everything like that we, they are they are the ones that's gonna actually have the fight and the trials and the tribulation not to say that people that's in the world doesn't have the tribulation and trials not to say that but the 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 people that's really striving to please god the temptation and the trial is going to be um i want to say 10 times worse because he's trying to get us, the devil is trying to get us back on his side, you know, back in his corner and out of God, God's God corner. Let me put it that way. And the apostle had said in one of his sermon when he was preaching, he said that many people that is here know if I should come in one day, and he said he said him and Williams, but he said if I should come in one day with um you know just like a woman, many people would still be there with him. They wouldn't leave. They wouldn't pack up and leave and see that something is wrong, no matter the teaching that they got. You know because we are getting teaching that these things are wrong, and if he should do that, many people would still be there under his preaching. You know, suppose he comes and say he got a new revelation from God or he talks to God and it's a new revelation, something that is definitely not in the scriptures. Many people would still be there. You know, it, it is unfortunate, but unfortunately, we do have people that is naive in these ways. That is very naive. Um, That's the reason why the apostle preached that we should not be so close to a preacher or a minister that if that preacher or minister step overboard or say something that is definitely not in the scripture or um, interpret the scripture in a wrong way that we would be aware of that, you know, that we would be aware of meaning that we got the right teaching before and a minister come and want to change it or saying something different, you know, we should not be so close to a minister or a preacher that we cannot tell that preacher that he is wrong or if he's trying to lead the church in a different um, way, you know, that is not according to doctrine. 
We should not be too close to that minister that we don't take up our bags and our things and leave. That's the preaching that I get from the apostle. And if the apostle, God forbid, should ever come um, with any teaching that is not according to doctrine and according to scriptures, I am gone. I am out of there. Because he has teach us in a way that, you know, I, I don't know. It is a bit easy for me to hear these things and know that, hey, that, that, that teaching is not right. So some people just go to church just to go to church. I go to church to get the teaching in me. I want to get it in me. You know, God forbid that the time I live to see the time when I can't have a Bible. I can't have it even on my phone. You know, I can't even be seen with the Bible. These things are happening in China. Where people is being arrested for having the Bible or for reading the Bible. Because China is changing the whole Bible and putting it into whatever they want it to, to be about. So if I should live to see a time like that, I want to get the word in me. You know, I want to get it in me. I know that I, I, I don't have to depend on the Bible to know wrong from right or to know the doctrine. You know, what he said about this um, woman, husband that molested her child. Listen to the true story from the apostle. I dealt with the case of, uh, you see, I deal with Bible and got it rightly divided. Right. Where a woman brought her husband to me. And she found out later that the husband was knocking up all four daughters. Oh, my Lord, my Lord. And the scripture that the husband used was when Lot daughters yeah. got the father drunk uh -huh. and lived with the father so seed can be in the land and from one daughter Moab was born mm. and from another daughter Ammon and from Moab the Moabites came right. and from Ammon the Ammonites came And she knew this was going on, but he kept bringing that scripture. Mm. She said, I, I got to talk to Pastor Jennings. Oh, yeah. That's right. He even got the wine. What? So he and the daughters can get drunk. Oh, Lord. And you pulpit deviants. Mm. You no good things. Talking about I'm too raw. No, you too scared. <laughs> That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. So then I had to get Bible where Moses laid law. Don't even see your sister or your daughter naked. Right. Right. One daughter. 15, another 13, another 10, another 6. What? My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. So I asked him. No, I asked the girls. How many of y'all got pregnant? They looked. And he tried to give them a look. I said, don't pay him no mind. How many of y'all got pregnant? Mm. Three of them. Raise their hand. Wow. I and I asked one, how many times? I asked the other, how many times? Good Lord. I asked the other, how many times? I said, who took you to get your abortions? My daddy. I told him, I said, if you thought it was right, why would you kill it? 
That's right. That's right. Folks get abortion because they don't, you know, they, either they don't want it, they, they went about it the wrong way, everything. everything. But if you're going to try to say it's God's will, why would you kill it? Right. You're a liar. That's you right. say, Pastor Jenny, I don't know what to do. I said, call the police. And he was a member of First Church. He's in jail now. No, that's the real story. And with everything that this man said about exposing the apostle. <laughs> no, this man, Joseph Roberts, said, even said this. This, this is what he said. I guess he wasn't getting as much forward as he hoped, you know, because when I checked out his works, really and truly, he, he, his intention was to, whatever his, his intention was, I, I don't think he really accomplished what he set out to accomplish. This is what he said. Listen. Due to popular requests, I'm gonna take a break off exposing Geno Jennings and I'm gonna go off some of these, like set the record straight, I do not consider him a false prophet, but I'm gonna go after some of these other guys by popular request by the Geno followers. They want me to leave Geno alone for a little bit, so I'm gonna give him a break. He said that he don't think the apostle is a false preacher or comes. You're exposing him. So, oh, comes, oh, you don't think he's a false preacher. <sighs> I thought this man was exposing the apostle. This is a joke. Now, let's listen to the apostle. You got to stay out there and holler. Just come get Pastor Jennings and behead him with Bible. Right. That's all you got to do. Your bishop, your daddy, your apostle, your prophet, your evangelist, I don't care who you are. Right. Just show up. show up. Just walk in. Raise your hand and say, I'm in the fight. The moment you say that, and show up. Don't keep making all your broadcasters hollering about Gino Jennings. Gino, I didn't know you fell in love with me this much. <laughs> God, you preach me more than you preach Jesus. <laughs> Amen. The messenger is a fool. The spiritual man. The spiritual man. Is mad. Has lost it. The prophet is a fool. That's what we see all over radio. All over. Television. Social media. Mega church. Small churches. That's right. Churches in the house. Churches in the garage. Churches in the bathrooms. <laughs> churches in people's bedrooms. Churches in people's closets. That's right. They're having churches in every place, in the barn, in the shed, Amen. in the second wife's house, in the third husband's room. That's right. The prophet is a fool. Fool. And the Bible says God have no pleasure. In fools. In fools. That's right. Viewers, I want you to hear what I'm about to outline to you by God's permission. Mm -hmm. Are you following a fool? Following. And is your spiritual leader gone mad? Gone mad. Are you listening? That's right. Follow me in your Bible. This is one of those heart-wrenching messages. Hosea chapter 9 and at verse 7. Amen. Amen. My Amen. sister-in-law said to me last night, that's right. and that's one thing about when men rise up and challenge the truth, it give all the public a chance to hear the stupidity. <laughs> that's right. And the dumb beliefs they have. That's right. And believe it or not, the beliefs that many of these men have, some of us had the same thing. Oh, yes. That's why, right. hallelujah. That's why we can thank God for deliverance, for bringing us out of this religious trash. That's right. Oh, thanks for watching, brothers and sisters. That's it from us here. Keep it locked. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And you can up on over to my personal channel. There you learn a little more about me. Um, I need your support over there as well. So go over there, subscribe to that channel. I'm going to put it somewhere there. Um, yeah, subscribe to that channel and follow me over there as well. So peace be.
Thank you.